It's time to focus on seniors with Helping Seniors TV. The television show designed to make you aware of senior issues and needs, as well as to acquaint you with the resources available to help you age in place and with dignity. Now, here's your host, Joe Steckler. I'm Joe Steckler, and welcome to Helping Seniors, the television arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard County. Our show is designed to provide you with information on how to develop your own aging and care plans. Our topic today is Kindred Healthcare. Join me as Lisa Bonanzi, the clinical liaison of Kindred Healthcare. Welcome, Lisa. Hi, thank you, Joe. I appreciate you having me here. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to have you here for several reasons. Uh, the primary one being, I think that people need to understand that Kindred is more than just healthcare. It's a hospital, it's uh, an in-home skilled nursing care service, but you've taken over an organization formerly called Genectiva, mm -hmm. and it now comes under the banner of Kindred Healthcare, and you have, I think, become the largest skilled nursing in-home care corporation in the United States. Well, that is pretty well said. We are the largest post-acute care healthcare company um, in, this, in the nation right now. We actually are the fourth largest employer, healthcare employer. Um, Kindred started off in the skilled nursing sector, um, and we grew from there. So now we are, uh, as you said, Gentiva formerly, Kindred at Home Now. Um, we are Kindred Hospital, like the, the transitional care hospital we have in Mel Melbourne here across from the airport. We also have skilled nursing facilities, but we don't, however, in this market. We have inpatient and outpatient rehab as well. So Kindred is in 47 states, but I always say that Kindred Hospital Melbourne is the best kept secret because nobody really knows what we do. They know what we don't do because our sign says no emergency services. But beyond that, people have no idea. I'll be honest. I have driven by that hospital so many times and I've really not known what goes on there. And uh, when uh, I've been closely associated with Gentiva for years mm -hmm. because Gentiva is, was a splendid organization and uh, in fact, they took care of me and all my post-surgery, my post-operations and everything. They, mm -hmm. they, I trusted them. Right. So I know that uh, they were acquired by a good corporation, but people need to know more about it because we have Holmes, Woodstock, and Parish Medical Center in Barrett County. Mm -hmm. But we have another long-term care place, a hospital, that some people could say it's a nursing home, it could say it's an assisted living, it could say it's a number of things. But that's what we want to talk about today so that as we advocate strongly that Brevard is an elder-friendly community. That's correct. If it's going to be an elder-friendly community, people need to understand the services that are provided. So our first question is, what do you really do Let's say with Kindred Healthcare. Now, you, you explain it to our viewing audience. Okay. Um, I am a clinical liaison. So my job encompasses this education and outreach. In addition to that, I have responsibilities to see and assess patients that are in ICUs and the Wustoff hospitals, the parish hospitals and Holmes Regional Health First Hospital. So see, we all work together, but we are the only transitional care hospital, and we have the certificate of need um, for Indian River, Brevard County and Osceola County. We get patients from all over. In fact, I had a patient fly in from Puerto Rico. So what type of patients and who comes to us? Well, basically they're the sickest of the sick. They're about 2% of the folks that are in an ICU that don't get better in days. And that's how we kind of look at um, patients and where they are in the recovery is in terms of days. When you've gone much past the, a week to 10 days, there has to be some planning put into place because the ICUs in traditional hospitals were never designed to keep people for weeks. They were designed right. to keep people for days. And you know, great thing, pharmacology, knowledge on disease state, all those things have enabled people to survive, but they need longer. So Kindred provides care instead of days, we provide it in terms of weeks. And we're where Kindred Hospital is one of the best in the country, the best of the best of weaning patients off of ventilators. Well, at the Kindred Hospital here in Melbourne, mm -hmm. uh, in Bavard County, how many patients can you take care of there? We have 60 beds. 
Very good question. We have 60 beds and all the rooms are private rooms because of the high level of acuity of our patients. All of the uh, beds can uh, handle a ventilator. Ventilate, we could handle 60 ventilator patients. 30 of those beds are plumb bedside for dialysis. We have two OR suites, so if you, if you come to us and you have to have a surgical procedure done, you can have it right, done right there at Kindred Hospital. So really what I tell people is the easiest way for me to explain who we are is to tell you who we aren't. We don't do pediatrics, even though Kindred people kind of think of the root of Kindred spirit and think that we do pediatrics, we do not. You say you don't do wound care? No, pediatrics. Okay, pediatrics, mm -hmm. we don't do We don't deliver babies. We don't do labor okay. and delivery, and we don't have emergency services. Majority of our patients do come from an ICU or hospital setting. However, they could come from um, their home, home health. Say you were declining, you weren't doing so well, and it looked like you might need some additional care at a higher level. You could come straight to Kindred from there. So, but Can doctors admit directly into Kindred? That's correct. And we have an open staff. So physicians can have privileges with us, provided they fill out the, the package and everything is done properly there. We do not exclude um, anyone from having privileges. If a physician does send their patient to us, we have a list of attending physicians to cover so they don't have to have another place that they have to go. Their days are very stretched thin as it is. Okay. Health First is a, uh, an HMO, mm -hmm. and they have their own doctor network and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. But you're saying that doctors in the Health First Network are doctors that are on staff for Wustoff or Omni doctors, they can all come to Kindred? It depends on what their contract is on their end. In other words, some of the Health First physicians have a contractual obligation that they cannot uh, have privileges in, at another facility. But as far as Health First, the HMO is concerned, we have, Kindred Hospital has a contract with them because quite frankly, the patients need some place to go. So we all work together. When I often say to people, I work for Kindred Hospital, a normal response will be, well, I go to Homes Regional. I say, well, that's, that's great, but let me explain why you might have to come to us. And I hope you never do, but you need to know about this as an option. So again, we're kind of like the Switzerland of Bavard County. <laughs> Well, this is something that people, when you get, I like to talk about the terminology, elements of care. Right. I like to say, I want to keep myself in my own home as long as possible. Right. If I got to the point where my memory was affected and it was too much for my wife to care for me, she might be able to farm me out to daycare for a few days a week to give her some a break. Right. The next step, if I can't stay at my home, or bring, maybe bring a nursing service in, uh, like Levin Healthcare or something like that that uh, can do uh, private hands duty. on, yeah, private duty, mm -hmm. to help my wife take care of me. Mm -hmm. and, and I can still stay at my home, my long-term health care insurance to cover that. Mm -hmm. But then I go to an assisted living facility. And then if I can't, they can't help me there, I go to a nursing home. Mm -hmm. But then if I get in that nursing home and I'm in declining health, mm -hmm. and a nursing home can't care for me, mm -hmm. Is that, do you get a candidate like that into Kindred? We do. Yep, okay. absolutely. And that's through our direct admit program. So to make it as simple as possible in healthcare, sometimes we talk about zones. So there's the green zone where the patient is doing well. There is the yellow, which is a cautionary. We need to step it up and watch more closely as to what's going on with the patient. And then there's the red zone, which is really a 911 in emergent situation. So what I tell people is, and the nursing staffs at the uh, skilled nursing facility, when a patient looks like they're going yellow, kind of orange, then they're a kindred patient most probably. That's, that's one of the benefits that Medicare provides is for patients who are not thriving at their current level of care to go to a higher level of care. And that's all arranged uh, within a couple of hours. Okay, some of the rules that apply to hospitals, like if uh, admitting a person for observation or admitting a person as an inpatient or an outpatient, mm -hmm. that wouldn't apply in, in Kindred. No, observation is used often when, I guess, the emergency department determines that the patient just needs some a limited amount of, of, uh, of care and, and monitoring, and they can make the patient stable enough to be able to release them in a short period of time. My concern is not always that the patient doesn't necessarily know that they're in observation. 
So it's a good idea to often ask or a family member ask, is, is my loved one being admitted or are they in observation? And the difference is going to be with your Medicare, if you're in observation, the patient is, is responsible for 20% of that billing. If you're inpatient, Medicare A covers all of that. So it's a little bit different, but it could be a significant difference to your pocketbook. So how is care paid for at Kendra, generally speaking? It's paid through through Part A. And so it's the same that you would have for an inpatient stay at one of the traditional hospitals that you think of. So Medicare mm-hmm. or insurance. Part a. Mm-hmm. Do you ever get anybody that's totally private pay? No, we really, well, you know, I can't say ever. Um, it's rare. It's just very it's rare. Rarely, mm-hmm. rare. It's right. rare. Mm-hmm. I think we were talking about how Kendra is different from the other hospitals, but what else in that part of, in that part of understanding what Kendra does and what it doesn't do, uh, what else, or is there anything else that's, that sets Kendra apart from most of homes? What is that? It's probably the easiest is the length of stay. Like I said before, you know, hospitals generally look at the patient's length of stay in terms of days. And ours is generally in terms of weeks. Um, There's daily physician visits, much like you would have at a traditional hospital. We have all specialties on staff. Um, We have respiratory therapy, skilled nursing 24-7. We have occupational therapy, um, speech therapy, uh, all rehab, gym, a lot of the same things that you would see in a traditional hospital. But again, you're, you're there for a longer period of time to heal. And that period of time often makes the difference in the outcome of what happens to a patient um, in the next step of the continuum. Okay. So you hit it. You hit it on the head when you said, "Okay, I'm at home with home health. Then I might go to an assisted living facility. Then I might go to a skilled nursing facility. But if I'm declining, I could go either to a traditional hospital, depending on what zone I'm in." or I could go to Kindred Hospital so I could find time to heal and be discharged back. A lot of times, we it's been my, my experience that people are discharged from um, one of the traditional hospitals to uh, uh, rehabilitation services like those offered at uh, Sea Pines mm-hmm. or Melbourne Terrace, mm-hmm. where they have... Uh, Therapist. I was in one of those for 15 days recovering from a stroke. Right, what, right. Could I have done the same thing at Kindred or not? Well, I, I, I can't necessarily answer that without knowing where you were clinically, but I can explain it as simple as this. Sea Pines or Health South is licensed as an inpatient rehab. And with that being said, their thrust of care is done through therapists, physical therapy, occupational therapy, all the rehab. So about okay. 70% of that care is focused on rehab. Now at Kindred, 70% of our care is really focused on medically stable, getting you medically stable enough. Getting you well. And then 30% rehab. And as you as you improve in that continuum, it goes 60-40 until finally there is a discharge plan for you to go someplace else. And it may be to Sea Pines. Since I managed a hospital at one point in my Navy career, and I had assisted floors working in, my, in a nursing in the home that I managed, uh, I'm seeing that there's an element of care here that we really haven't talked about. We really have not talked about on radio. We haven't talked about on TV before. It's not really covered in the newspaper. You don't see it covered. You see financial people talk about financial planning, estate planning, elder law attorneys, and everything else. But you don't hear medical people talking about the type of care offered to Kindred. Uh, I know that uh, ICU beds are limited, yep. and they, they try to move people in and out as fast as they can. Mm-hmm. It would seem to me like uh, they would want to use Kindred more, and I guess I'm not really understanding. Uh, is Kindred overflowing, or could... We, we are at capacity now, um, which is unusual, because usually this time of year, we tend to, our census tends to um, wind down a bit, but that's not what's happening. We are maxed, and we are looking for RNs. So if you know, know an RN that wants to come work at Kindred, please let me know. So you're short of staff. We are short of staff, as of mo- all, most of the hospitals here in um, Brevard County. So, I know an RN. I'll tell her. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But the other part of the equation, uh, Lisa, we're talking about here is uh, we're having people understand that at Kindred Healthcare is composed of the Kindred Hospital System and the Kindred In Home mm -hmm. Care Now. Mm -hmm. And Kindred In Home Care Now encompasses the former Gentiva skilled nursing system. Did did Kindred Healthcare have their own in home service before? Yes, we did. You did? But we didn't have it to the extent. Gentiva was the largest and the best of the best of what they in did the and still are. Yes. They're, the only thing that's changed is their name. Um, the staff is pretty much the same. We took over and looked and learned from the different services that Gentiva offers. So really, it, it hasn't changed but by name only. It's still the same high-level quality health care that you were seeing before. But I would see a little difference here. Um, knowing how the hospitals operate mm -hmm. and how I think you intend to operate with the acquisition of Gentiva, when you mentioned before that you uh, had speech therapy, occupational therapy, and physical therapy in your hospital, mm -hmm. and about 30% of that was focused on the whole part of the concept. But now you bring in the largest home health care corporation in the United States who already has an outstanding mm -hmm occupational, speech, and physical therapy branch. When you marry those two forces up, it seems to me like uh, traditional rehabilitation services might be hard-pressed to uh, for um, clients. Well, you know, we do own um, a rehab inpatients and outpatient right. rehabs in the country too, but we just specifically don't have an inpatient rehab hospital here. Um, the certificate need is with Sea Pines House South. So your point is well taken. Does a patient need an inpatient rehab upon discharge from Kindred? And it really just depends. We all heal differently. And just cookie cut a plan together would be doing a disservice to the patient and the family. We have case management there at Kindred Hospital that have been trained and they're the best at the best um, at determining what is the best place and safest place for that patient to be discharged to. So there are a lot of choices, and that's really what my job is to do, is to say when you or your loved one is in the hospital, don't just think traditionally that once you get discharged, you're either going to go home with home health or go to a nursing home or a skilled nursing facility. There are lots of other options, with the highest acuity level being Kindred Hospital. And oh, see, this is one of the reasons we, that I'm a strong believer that these television shows need to be pr produced. But we need to bring more on our little known parts of our care system in front of this TV camera mm -hmm. so that the 545,000 people in Brevard County and those others that see what we're doing worldwide, because okay. this show will be on worldwide YouTube. Right. So right. somebody plays, you said Kindred was in 47 states? That's right. And we have a new service called 866 Kindred. And it's a open 24-7, you call 866-KINDRED, and it is manned by RNs 24-7 to answer healthcare questions. It's free. So it's not just, it, it, depending on where you are calling, they're gonna look at the market and see what kind of services are in that market for you to use. It does, doesn't have to be Kindred, it could be anything. Um, I, I, I wrote that down there, I said, I, I said, how to contract both hospital and Kindred at home care, but I didn't understand that that benefit, oh, help viewers understand the ads and relationship between 1-800-KINDRED. Yeah, 866-KINDRED. And those ads have just started running in this market here on ABC, CBS, NBC, and Fox. And basically it explains that if you have a healthcare question, much like the questions we're talking about today, does Medicare cover this? If so, is there a copay? What What are my options? If, I, if my loved one's getting discharged from the hospital, what resources do I have in my community as far as facilities and services? And see, that's it's a wonderful free service. And there are RNs, so it's not just lay people talking about healthcare. See, this is you're doing the same thing that we at Helping Seniors have advocated for five years. Mm -hmm. and, and I did this when I was the director of the Alzheimer's program. We did much the same thing that we're doing today. I started this uh, seven, sixteen, nine years ago that 
the, the objective was to inform, educate, and connect. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure people understand. Right. How do they understand? They have to either read it, right. see it someplace, right. or hear it. Or and, have an advocate. Or have an advocate. Right, that. Have I, an say, advocate. I say that often, and people look at me, advocate. I said, would you ever enter a courtroom without an attorney? No. Then why would you enter a hospital without knowing what other resources are going to be after the next point? And quite frankly, I understand that you're in a crisis mode a lot, and you're thinking about other things and how are you going to handle this, and just it's not a good time. Okay. Now that you've acquired mm -hmm. the Gentiva and are now called Kindred at Home, I know that Gentiva, when they operate under the Gentiva banner, 99% of their clientele was, was, was skilled nursing care and through uh, Medicare. Right. They still do that. Correct. But have you added or do you serve private insurance as well are, are private pay under that under that banner also or not generally speaking the your medicare does cover the home health services so that would be who would be funding it as far as the resource yeah, yeah but how about people under 65 lisa under 65 then it right. would depend on their individual plan it really does okay so all the more reason for people to understand mm -hmm. this Affordable Care Act I has know. not really solved the problem. No. We have 20 to 30 million people out there mm -hmm. that that don't have the type of Cadillac plan that covers this coverage. Right. And they think that, so, but when people buy insurance right. and they have a problem, they ask about my coverage and they say, you don't cover it, you're not covered. Mm -hmm. And they can't accept it, they don't understand that. Right. And we get questions like that all the time. So we work with the Shine people a lot. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, I've had people say, oh, I used to be a Shine counselor, they don't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. That is not true. Yeah. Generally speaking, a Shine counselor is gonna get you pointed in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And what I'm hearing you say is that this Kindred 1-800 is I'm going to, I'll call up myself and ask a question. That's what I do. Yep. I test the system. Right. Uh, I know that if somebody calls our 473-7770 number and our information specialist gets the phone call, she listens to the person. Right. And that's extremely important. Uh, you can hear what a person says, but you may not understand them. You have to listen, hear, and understand. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand what the problem is, or if you don't extract the problem from the person, you can't direct the element of care to them that they need to have resolved. Right. That's what I'm hearing you say Kindred Healthcare is doing under some of this new formation. That's correct. Um, there is a lot of misinformation. And like you're saying, you know, when you go to buy a health insurance um, plan, sometimes it can be quite complicated and the literature behind it can be lengthy and cumbersome to read but i've seen on several occasions that you know an insurance company may say oh yes you have a home health benefit well the home health benefit might be for just three visits so you have to dig a little bit deeper so right. 866 kindred can help in those arenas now sometimes different plans there could be several different types of humana several different types of blue cross obviously but um, yeah, do your due diligence on the front end and okay. make sure your family knows what your wishes are. It's imperative, especially at a time when you are that sick in the ICU. That's so important. A question that I, was, that I wasn't going to ask, I'm going to ask you this. What's your background? Well, I um, my background's a little scattered. Um, I was a pharmaceutical rep for many, many years. And the clinical aspect of my life, I, was, I worked as a nurse in Arkansas, and then when I moved back here, um, I got into pharmaceuticals and enjoyed that industry. One of the passions I have about my job now, and it's the light bulb, light bulb moments, when someone looks at you with a sense of relief, like, I didn't know that Kindred existed. I didn't know that this was an option. And I get the most fulfillment out of educating and helping people navigate the process. So that's my background. I started in pharmaceuticals, which gave me a great foundation for um, building communication skills and understanding that if you build a hospital, people aren't just going to come. You have to let them know what you're doing. 
And so um, one by one, I get to be the Pied Piper and tell them, you know, that this is an option. And I thank you for having me on your show because this is great. But, uh, and do you conduct any training with your outreach people that, that like, like your, your clinical discharge people, would be, the people that work with the families and the patients are discharged, do you have periodical meetings with them to explain what you and I are talking about? Well, you know, we do gather information from WebMD and some other websites that are, we're rated. You know, we want to know how our, and we are a five-star facility. So we want to know how we're doing in the community and what the, and what the families think of us and what the patients think of us. And if they would come back. In fact, I have a patient just yesterday afternoon who wants to come back because uh, they they love the care that they received and they feel like they're declining in health again. So, but see, you do a wonderful job of explaining what Kennedy Healthcare does mm -hmm. and what it doesn't well, do. Thank you. And the difference between a hospital. My concern is always every time I get somebody on at one of our radio or television shows that understands it, I'm always concerned about. It. Are they or could they be doing a better job of imparting their knowledge to the people that are on their staff so that they can connect with the other people? Because you can't do it by yourself. No. No, nor can I. Right. I can I can produce a TV show like this mm -hmm. and I can get you to explain it. Right. But we have to ensure that we have people farther down the echelon that are understanding what you and I are talking about. And and the viewing audience themselves. Right. If they get a better handle on, on what's not happening, right. they can help their friends and family understand where they can go to get a question answered. That's right. In the time left, what else would you have to say about Kindred Healthcare, Kindred Hospital, or Kindred at Home? Well, I think Kindred's a great company to work for. I think our mission statement really sums up who we are as a healthcare company and, and as a most admired Fortune 500 healthcare company um, in that we provide the, the care to people. We, we promote that healing. We're, we're providing some additional hope. Um, we're, we're protecting their integrity. And, you know, we're providing value for the health care that they're receiving. And you just need to be your own advocate. And you need to be there for your family when they need you to help navigate the system. Thank you, Liz. We're out of time. Thank but, you, Joe. Uh, we'll have you back again. I would look okay, forward to that. Thank, thank you. you. I'm Joe Stackler. Thank you for joining our program today. I'd like to remind you that our senior information line is available to you at 321-473-7770. There you can get help and direction that could be helpful for your specific situation or circumstances. The work of helping seniors is very important, but we can't do it alone. That is why our sponsors here in Brevard County are so important. I'd like to thank our many area sponsors, businesses and medical providers who support the mission of helping seniors that help us carry the cost of our media efforts. If you'd like to join us either as a business partner or simply donate as an individual, we would welcome your call at 321-473-7770. You're always welcome to visit our website at www.helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Thanks so much for your help. It does make a difference.